My name is Magda. I'm a videographer, I work at America's Test Kitchen, and I have an insatiable sweet tooth. And while I'm not a pro, I've learned a few things about baking and dessert making since I started working here. Show-stopping confections may look intimidating, but if I can do it, anyone can. So let's do this together and make some dessert. Late summer, early fall desserts are the best, but stone fruit season can be short-lived. The cherry cobbler I'm making today benefits from a jarred cherry filling, warm spices like allspice and nutmeg, and a crispy, chewy biscuit topping that's buttery, lightly sweet, and the perfect pairing for this tart and juicy cherry filling. I'm also making a super simple whipped cream to take the place of store-bought ice cream. This is my favorite seasonal dessert, and it can be made all year long. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the cherry filling, and I'll need to strain those cherries so that I can thicken the cherry juice without overcooking the cherries. I need a strainer, or a colander, which I'm using here, and six cups of jarred sour cherries with their juice. For me, that's about two 24-ounce jars of sour cherries. As you can see, I've got a pretty good amount of cherry juice. That's about three cups of cherry juice, but I only need two. So I'm gonna transfer my drained cherries to a big glass bowl, get those out of the way, shake off that colander, and now it's time to measure those two cups of cherry juice into another big bowl where I can add the rest of my filling ingredients. Using a scale here just to make sure I hit those two cups exactly. And now I can get rid of the scale and bring out my spices and my thickening agent. Specifically, cornstarch, allspice, nutmeg, vanilla, sugar, and salt. All stuff that I pretty much always have stocked in my pantry. I've got three tablespoons of cornstarch. Here's two. Just gonna give it a nice little flick into the bowl. And here's number three. On to the vanilla, that's half a teaspoon. And I've got a quarter teaspoon of ground allspice and a pinch of ground nutmeg and a half cup of sugar and another pinch of salt. And I give this a whisk just to break up any lumps of cornstarch. And now I can move on to the next step, which requires my cooktop and my 12 inch cast iron skillet. So cute, right? Pretty perfect for those bright red cherries. All right, cherry mixture goes into the skillet, carefully, obviously. Some of the spices kind of clung to the bottom of the bowl, so I'm just going to use my spatula and scrape every last bit into the skillet. And with my heat set to medium high, I'm going to bring this mixture to a simmer, whisking frequently. And I'm waiting for the mixture to thicken and bubble a little bit. Usually bubbling is how I can tell that the cornstarch is activating and I know that it's going to start thickening pretty soon. I like to switch from a whisk to a wooden spoon or spatula here. I feel like I can judge better whether the mixture has thickened by how well it clings to the spoon. It's making a nice trail in the bottom of the skillet. All right, so I just turned my heat off. Give this just a few more stirs. My cherries have been sitting off the side waiting patiently and without splattering the hot juice over the sides of the skillet, I'm adding my cherries to the mixture. I can't get over this color right now. With easier recipes like this, I feel like I can really take my time and be super deliberate with the method. It's nice just to linger on the smells, the colors, and the textures of the ingredients. This is the perfect recipe for that. Once the cherries are in, I'm going to give them a quick push around the skillet to make sure I have a nice, even layer of cherries. Once I'm satisfied, I can set my skillet aside and get to work on my biscuits. All right, first things first, I got some all-purpose flour. It's about seven and a half ounces to be exact. I know the scoop and level method is probably just as effective here, but once I started weighing my ingredients, I really noticed a drastic improvement in my baking. Time for some sugar. I need two and a quarter ounces of sugar, which comes out to about five tablespoons. Now it's time for the usual suspects, baking soda, baking powder, and salt. This is also a good time to mention that I've got half a stick of butter melting off to the side. That way it's nice and melted when I'm ready to add my wet ingredients. Just a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. These biscuits are gonna have some really nice lift. They're gonna rise really nicely in the oven. You're gonna have a crunchy exterior. My mouth is watering as I talk about this. A quick whisk to combine. And now I'm ready for that melted butter. Again, four tablespoons or half a stick of butter here. Just drizzling it over the top while I keep my whisk moving in the flour. Probably gonna switch to a spatula in just a second. Once I've got my butter somewhat incorporated, 
I'm going to add 3 quarter cups of buttermilk. And now I'm going to switch to my spatula and sort of fold the biscuit dough over itself and around the sides of the bowl. This is my second favorite part of the recipe. This is really soothing. Not to mention the melted butter and the sugar in this dough just smells so good. It's a little shaggy, but I can tell it's very well combined, nice and moist. This looks really good to me, so now it's time to bring all the pieces together. The skillet of filling comes back into the picture. And with a little cookie scooper here, I'm going to scoop pretty hefty balls of dough or one inch pieces of dough and place them about a half inch apart on top of the filling, just like so. I'm really shooting for that half inch distance between them. I like to go in a circular pattern around the sides of the skillet at first, then kind of fill in the center as I go. Trying to be mindful of that half inch distance from each other. I want each person to have a biscuit or two without feeling like they have to separate one gargantuan biscuit in the process. Now I'm gonna hit the center of the skillet. I've got enough dough for just a few more biscuits. I don't know where I'm gonna put them. All right, I'm happy with this. There might be a few monster biscuits. Those can be for me. I'll make a sacrifice if I have to. Final touches here. I want a crunchy little layer of sugar on top of the biscuits. So for that, I need about two tablespoons of sugar. Turbinado is obviously the best choice, but wouldn't you know it, I ran out. So granulated it is. All right, into a 400 degree oven this goes for 30 to 35 minutes. I'm also gonna rotate the skillet halfway through bake. Look at that. It's been 30 minutes already. The cobbler is done. Golden brown, bubbly. It smells like a dream. I mean, honestly, I don't think this cobbler could look any better. Unless, of course, it's topped with whipped cream. And while ice cream and cobbler are pretty quintessential, I feel like ice cream can easily overpower the fruit flavor, especially when it's extra cloying and overwhelmingly vanilla-y. All right, I got a cup of chilled whipped cream, and I never said I wanted no vanilla, just a little bit of vanilla. So this is about a teaspoon and a tablespoon of sugar. Lightly sweet, not too sweet. Time for a little upper body workout. So in addition to chilling my cream and my bowl, I often go so far as to chill my whisk. You know, work smarter, not harder. And since the cream and all the tools were cold, it really doesn't take that long to see the whipped cream thicken. And then just a few minutes later, I should see those soft peaks that I'm looking for. It's probably worthwhile to let the cobbler cool for about 30 minutes or so, but I actually like it a little on the hot side. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig right in. A little scoop of cobbler for myself. Wow, that looks amazing. Little scoop of cobbler for my best friend. Best friend, I mean my dog. My dog is my best friend. And a few extra cherries, why not? Because they look so plump and juicy. And finally, just a dollop, of course a generous dollop of whipped cream. I really hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it and eating it. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.